Hi, this is Maha Bailey uh, at the American University in Cairo, and I am not an accessibility expert, but I'm giving you a two-minute accessibility tip. Um, right now, I'm using Google Slides, um, and all I did was just present and choose this CC over here where it says captions, and I just chose to use captions. And you can cha change the size. You can make them larger or smaller. I've got small for now, that's the default, but I could make it large. You see how much bigger that is? And put them at the top instead of at the bottom. Makes more sense to have them small and at the bottom. So captions are useful for several reasons. They're useful, obviously, for people who are hard of hearing. Um, they're also useful for people who are not fluent speakers of the language being spoken, and they're very useful for people who have unstable internet connections because the audio might cut in and out, but the written captions will help them keep up if they've missed a couple of words or a couple of sentences. Of course, they have limitations because these are auto-generated, the ones I'm going to talk about today, so they're not 100% accurate. Uh, you may need to edit them, and you can't always edit them. It depends. And the accuracy depends on how familiar the software is with the speaker's accent. So, and things like amount of noise in the background and things like that. So two options for live captions are Google Slides, which I just demonstrated right now, and PowerPoint 365. Um, the way you do it on PowerPoint, when you choose slideshow, you say always use subtitles and then you present. And uh, asked if I want to allow it to use my microphone, and I'm going to say yes. And now it's going to start the subtitles. So now whatever I say, it doesn't really matter what's on the slide. Whatever I say is going to get written over here. Okay, I'm going to undo this now. So these are the options for live captioning. If you can't have a human being doing the live captioning, these are really good options for you. Um, if you have the option, if you're recording a video to be shared with people afterwards, then I would use one of these two options after the fact. I've used both of them a lot. One of them is the Zoom Cloud auto transcript. This uses the author, and then you have the YouTube. Uh, you can just upload your video to YouTube even if you want to keep it private, and um, it will auto generate the transcript. So just to make sure, if you've got use, if you've got a Zoom account that's um, a paid account. If you just go to recordings and settings under recordings, um, there's something called audio, audio transcript, and that's the one that we're looking for. Automatically transcribe the audio of a meeting or a webinar that you record to the cloud. But you just have to record to the cloud when you do that. It's not going to do it for your local recordings. And so if I just open up one of these, um, how about this one? I'm just going to show you what it looks like. This is one of my Zoom cloud recordings. If I click on it, first of all, there are four files. The audio transcript is the one that's the text file, which um, you can download also and people can read it. Um, and then I just want to show you very quickly that this is your video, right? As soon as you, I'm just going to make it no audio so that when I play it, it doesn't. So you see what happens there? The, uh, the transcript is appearing on this side. You can edit it. So see that this is my belly. That's supposed to be my name. It's supposed to say <laughs> Maha Belly. So it will always make mistakes with, with things like people's names. That's to be expected. Uh, but it's not going to make huge mistakes with regular speech. You can also, so people can watch that on the side, but they can also turn it on over here so that when the video plays, the text of the transcript appears. See? It has an updated. But anyway, so that's that's what you can do with that. Um, like I said, the other option is to use YouTube. And if you use YouTube, you just click create to upload your video. Uh, and give it a few more minute, few minutes afterwards. It asks you what language your video is in. So I'm just going to show you something real, real quick. I don't want to upload a video, but um, you're just going to select the video that you want to upload. Um, and at some point in the settings, it's going to ask you what language the video is in, and it will auto-generate the transcript. And then, or if you've got it already recorded on Zoom Cloud and you have the Zoom transcript, you could also upload that transcript. And we'll keep both of them. Um, I'm just going to open one of these uh, to show you 
how you can edit the subtitles. So it's called subtitles over here. And you can see over here that there are two different um, subtitles for this video. One is the automatic auto generated by, um, by YouTube. And this one I had uploaded from, um, from Zoom and edited it. And you can just click edit in the studio and you play it and it shows you at which minute and then you can go in and edit that. Again, I'm gonna not play the video so much, but show you how you can edit it, right? So I wanna make this capital. It's, YouTube is a little bit better at recognizing strange things like my name, but not as good at capitalization. For me, the, the main advantage is if you're gonna be recording something to share, uh, then it's better to use the, the Zoom option or the YouTube option because then you can go and edit it later. And that's my accessibility tip for today.